She's the sanest, crazy person you've ever met. Jody Arias looked like the girl next door. He made me feel like a very beautiful person on the inside. I loved my brother very much, and I miss him so much. I see the pain in our faces and the tears we've cried, and it never stops. She's a sociopath. I know that I'm innocent. God knows I'm innocent. Travis knows I'm innocent. No jury is going to convict me. Why not? Because I'm innocent, and you can mark my words on Jody Arias was born on July 9, 1980, in Salinas, California, U.S., to William Angelo and Sandy Arias. She has one older half-sister, one younger sister, and two younger brothers. I have a large family. We're all pretty close. She attended Reka High Schools, but dropped out in the 11th grade. Later, she earned GED. Jody developed a knack for photography at 10, and such interest continued leading her to pursue it as a profession and take up several part-time jobs as professional photographer. I've always been drawn to nature and, and things like that. I think that inspires a lot of my art and a lot of my photography as well. Jody left home at 17 in a typical teenage rebellion phase and moved in for a short time with a boyfriend. She began working at what was to be a series of jobs over the next 20 years. She was ambitious and highly motivated to be financially independent. Jody continued to live in different Northern California cities for several years. She relocated to Southern California in mid-2000 and in 2007, she moved to Arizona. During these years, Jody's mother, Sandy's relationship with Jody was strained as she struggled to find her identity and her place in the world. Jody's communication with Sandy was sporadic, fairly typical for a 20-something-year-old, out exploring the world. In 2008, Jody moved in with her grandparents. Born on July 28, 1977, Travis Alexander had a difficult early life. He and his six siblings had parents who were addicted to drugs, and they suffered physical abuse at the hands of their mother. When Alexander was 10, he and his siblings went to live with their grandmother. But by the time he reached adulthood, Alexander had built a stable life for himself. He'd converted to Mormonism and found a job as a salesman with prepaid legal services. And it was at a company convention in Las Vegas in September 2006 that Alexander met Jody Arias for the first time. It was love at first sight. Alexander and Arias, a blonde freelance photographer, stayed up until 4 am talking. And Alexander gushed to friends the next morning that he'd found his wife. The next morning, he tells me that he's found his wife and this is the girl that he wants to marry. I went from intrigued by her to interested in her to caring about her deeply to realizing how lucky I would be to have her as part of my life forever. Alexander wrote to a friend once he and Arius had started dating. She is amazing. It is not hard to see that whoever scores Jody, whether it be me or someone else, is going to win the wife lotto. Though Arias lived in Palm Desert, California, and Alexander in Mesa, Arizona, their relationship initially seemed strong. We got to know each other through hours upon hours of phone conversations. We just discovered a lot of common interests and grew close. The couple traveled through the Southwest together, and Arias even converted to Mormonism after just a couple of months of dating Alexander. But cracks soon appeared. Travis Alexander's joy at meeting Jody Arias was tempered by guilt. He and Arias were having premarital sex, which the Mormon church forbids. He sometimes took out his guilt on Aria, calling her a slut in texts and emails. Moreover, many of Alexander's friends began to think that Arias had an unhealthy obsession with Alexander. This is around the time where she became very possessive of him. She eavesdropped on his conversations, looked through his emails and social media accounts, and even forwarded emails between Alexander and other women to herself. Though Alexander insisted that Jody Arias was a good person and that he really liked her, he eventually decided to end things. Alexander felt too guilty about having premarital sex to continue seeing Arias. But even after breaking up, they kept seeing each other. This made Arias' obsession with Alexander even worse. As he started seeing other women, Alexander told friends that Arias slashed his tires, hacked into his Facebook, and harassed the women he went out with. Sometimes, she even snuck into his house. Alexander missed an important conference call on the evening of June 4. The following day, Arias met Ryan Burns, a once-budding love interest and co-worker at prepaid legal services, at his home in West Jordan, Utah. 
He later said that he noticed that Arias's formerly blonde hair was now dark brown and that she had cuts on her hand. She left Salt Lake City on June 6 and drove west toward California. She called Alexander several times and left several voicemail messages for him. She also accessed his cell phone voicemail system. When Arias returned the car on June 7, it had been driven about 2,800 miles, 500 km. The rental clerk testified that the car was missing its floor mats and had red stains on its front and rear seats. However, it could not be verified that the car had floor mats when Arias had picked it up, and the red stains could not be analyzed as the car was cleaned before police could examine it. On June 9, having been unable to reach Alexander, a concerned group of friends went to his home. His roommates had not seen him for several days, but they believed that he was out of town and thus did not suspect that anything was amiss. After finding a key to Alexander's bedroom, the group entered and found large pools of blood in the hallway to the master bathroom and Alexander's body in the shower. In the 911 call, the dispatcher asked whether Alexander had been suicidal or if anyone was angry enough to hurt him. Alexander's friends mentioned Arias by name as a possible suspect, stating that Alexander had told them that she had been stalking him, accessing his Facebook account and slashing his car's tires. Hello. Hi, so what's going on? He's, uh, he, he's dead. He's in his bedroom okay. in, in the shower. Okay. How did this happen? Do you have any idea? No, we have no idea. Everyone's been wondering about him okay. for well, a few said, days. Well, she said that there was blood. So is it coming from his head? Did he cut no, his No, it, 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 it's all over the place. While searching Alexander's home, investigators found several vital clues inside Alexander's bedroom and bathroom. A spent 25 caliber shell casing was located on the floor near the sink, and a hair and a small latent print in blood were found near the entrance to the bathroom hall. Police found his recently purchased digital camera damaged in the washing machine. On July 9, 2008, Arias was indicted by a grand jury in Maricopa County, Arizona for the first degree murder of Alexander. She was arrested at her home six days later. Do you remember me? Of course I do. <clears throat> well, I traveled all the way up here to come talk to you. Because, you know, I've been working on Travis's case ever since it happened. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I know exactly when it happened, when he was killed. I know a lot of details. And just recently we found quite a bit of evidence and I'll discuss that with you. The main thing that I'm looking for, though, is answers on why certain things happened, why they went so far, and also to get your statements. Okay. <clears throat> um, a lot of details on this case that haven't been released to, to the public and not even to Travis's family, and those details are known only by us and the person who did it, okay? And, and that's one of the reasons I'm here, is because I believe that you know some of these details. Okay. And I think you can help us. I would love to help you in any way that I can. Okay. Um, because we're here at the police department, the sheriff's department here in, uh, was it Siskiyou County? Siskiyou. That's what it's called, okay. Um, and you're considered uh, under arrest or detained, you're not free to go. And obviously you guys kept this relationship hidden from everybody else and because uh, nobody really knew about it. Well, um, There were some people who, who I talked to and said, yeah, they continue to have a relationship even after they broke up. And there are others who, said, who are saying that you had become obsessive with him to the point to where you would uh, going to his house when he wasn't there or when you weren't invited and and he would talk to people saying you know she, she just kind of showed up and I don't want to tell her to leave but uh, you know I, I don't want her here oh there were a, that was yeah, must have been early on because yeah. there were a couple times when 
we established a rule early on, just don't, you know, don't come over unless, he said, you can come over any time, but I need to know first. Yes. He's like, you just never know. Because you ran things. into somebody one time, right? Didn't you run into, like, one of his ex-girlfriends as well, or, or was it Deanna that you ran into? Oh, yeah. Um, well, that was, I was, that was okay that I was there. He asked me to stay there and um, be with Napoleon, because okay. that was during con uh, conference, general conference okay. in October of last year. Um, he took a road trip with some friends from his church to Utah, mm -hmm. and, um, Unless he's going to California, he pretty much leaves Napoleon at home. Mm -hmm. And so he needed someone to be there. And it's like I got full house privileges. I could sleep in yeah. bed, I could eat, you know, food. And I've and talked to her and she said that was kind of an unusual kind of situation. She didn't expect you to be there. She didn't at all. And so at first I was like, well, I was like, did you give Deanna any, any, you know, flack over coming over unannounced? Because we had just set this rule. Mm -hmm. And he's like, I talked to her about it. He's like, but I'll tell you what, I was on the phone for three hours with her. She was freaking out that you were there. Mm -hmm. And um, I think the more that we, the more people knew about us associating, the more stress we both got from it. Mm -hmm. And so um, it was just easier to try and keep it a secret, and it, we, we didn't always do a good job at that. I think his roommates may have seen, he's seen her and some things. Mm -hmm. um, but they were kind of cute to themselves types, so we didn't worry too much about them. Okay. The first week of, of June, you took a trip to Salt Lake City. Remember that trip we talked about? Oh, this year? I yes. Was, I'm thinking back. Um, <coughs> yeah. you, had, you had left, I think it was like a Monday. Well, like Monday, June 2nd. Monday, June 2nd, in morning or afternoon or something, I can't remember, what, late morning? I think it was morning. Okay, and you'd gone down to Reading and rented a car. Mm -hmm. um, where did you rent that car? Uh, the Reading Airport. Okay, do you remember what car company it was? It, ooh, I don't remember the rental company, but I remember the make and model. It was a Ford Focus. Yeah, I got that from other people in Utah. They said you showed up in a Ford Focus. Uh -huh, it was white, four-door. No. Um, I like road trips. Cruise control is really good. You don't remember what company it was? Uh, Who rented maybe. it? I did. Was it was it your credit card? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, I could look it up. And so maybe. you took a trip and you decided to go to, um, instead of going over to Utah, you went straight out to Los Angeles area? I went to Santa Cruz first. Santa Cruz. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I stayed the night in Monterey. And the next day I drove to <coughs> Pasadena, okay. waiting for Laura to call me back. You didn't contact her at all? Uh, she contacted me finally after I'd already left LA. It was too late. You'd already yeah. left at that point. Yeah, and we had plans to, to do that again this and week. Which route did you take from, from there? I was supposed to get on the 15 and go all the way up. Mm -hmm. And I somehow got off the 15. Where did you end up? Um, for a while I was lost. And I'm not above sleeping in the car, so I slept for a while. Okay. I'm a heavy sleeper and I sleep a lot, so. But you were on the 15 for a while, mm -hmm. and you ended up getting off the 15 somewhere. Yeah, I, I, I looked at a map, but I'm pretty sure I know where I went. So you, you took this trip and you left on, was it Monday the 2nd, right? And you didn't get to Utah until Thursday, you told me. Yeah, I got to Utah on Thursday. So Thursday, and that's the 5th? Mm, yeah, I think so. so. Monday, that's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, yeah, 5th. Okay, so we have, it's like 48 hours there that, well, obviously three days, but there's plenty, there's 48 hours. So this trip took you a little over 48 hours there. Mm -hmm. um, I have a problem with this trip. I've gone over this trip over and over in my mind and on paper. And even if there's still 20 some odd hours, even if you pulled over to sleep a couple of times. Oh, did I tell you that I got stranded? Yeah. Okay. You mentioned that. If you slept for 10 hours, I only slept for like here an hour. and here, it would still leave. 18 some odd hours yeah. for something else. Okay. This is what people are focusing on is this trip that you took. Because they're saying she left, she didn't get to till Thursday. 
Wednesday. That's when Travis was killed. At this point, Jody stating that she got lost and she wasn't at Travis' house the day of murder. I did not go near his house. Isn't there... Um... What if I could show you proof you were there? Well, Would that change your mind? I wasn't there. You can be honest with me, Jody. I was not at Travis's house. Was not. You were at Travis's house. You guys had a sexual encounter. Which there's pictures. And I know you know there's pictures because I have them. Police were able to recover deleted images showing areas and Alexander in sexually suggestive poses taken at approximately 1.40 p.m. June 4. I will show them to you. Okay? So, what I'm asking you is for you to be honest with me. I know you were there. Are you sure those pictures aren't from another time? Positive. Absolutely positive. The last time I had any kind of sexual contact with Travis was in April. Remember I told you about the camera? Mm-hmm. Okay. That camera was damaged. Someone put it in a washing machine, ran it through a wash cycle with some clothes of Travis's, but the card's intact. Remember I told you that card was destroyed? I didn't want to tell you the truth because I wanted to make sure those photos were accurate and we can pull deleted photos. I don't care if you delete them six months ago. We can pull every photo that was ever on there. Pull the little pixels together. Get the timestamps on them. Not all of them, but most of them have timestamps on them. And we can verify those timestamps. Mm -hmm. And I have pictures of you in Travis's bedroom with Travis. Pictures of him. And it's obvious you guys are having sex. Taking photos of each other. And they're dated and time stamped on the day he died. Jody still is sticking to her story that she wasn't at Travis's the day of his murder. Are you sure it's me? I mean, because I Jody, was not there. It's you. And you know it's you. I know all the details of this case. The only thing I don't know is why. Why did you choose to go visit Travis that day? And why did you do what you did? I've never why, heard Jody? Travis. You did. You hurt him. That's why we're here. That's why I flew up here. Because I needed to talk to you about this. I can just arrest you and throw you in jail, but I want to know why. Why did you do this to him? wouldn't hurt Travis. He's done so much for me. There's so much evidence in that house. So much, and it all points to you. A bloody palm print was discovered along the wall in the bathroom hallway. It contained DNA from both Arias and Alexander. I, I lived there. <sighs> I was there for months and months and months. Mm -hmm. I know you took pictures of him in the shower. Alexander naked in the shower just before his death, he appeared to be posing in some of the photographs. However, other photos, which were dark and grainy, were of a subject on the floor of the bathroom bleeding profusely. Just before he died? I don't think he would allow that. Mm -hmm. And the camera actually took a couple of photos by accident during the time that he was being killed. Really? Yeah, Jody, really. You were there. Quit playing this game. It's time for you to just come out and, and I didn't tell know. me. I didn't know. I did not hurt Travis. Jody, this is over. 
This is absolutely over. You need to tell me the truth. Listen, the truth is I did not hurt Travis. Okay, so we're Joey, safe. you can continue to do this, okay? A records check shows you that you uh, has reported a, a gun stolen. On May 28, 2008, Aria's grandparents' house was burglarized. A .25 caliber gun, $30 in cash, a stereo, and a DVD player were stolen. Several other guns stored in the same cabinet as the in 95 caliber gun that was stolen were left untouched, as well as a large amount of quarters that were on top of the cabinet. 25 Auto just happens to be the same caliber as the weapon used to kill him. A 25 Auto was used to kill Travis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, along with multiple stab wounds. Joey, if you want, I can show you some pictures of him. Do you want to see pictures of him? Part of me does and part of me doesn't. Why, because you don't want to remember? No, I Jody. just, there's a morbid curiosity. Jody. I wanted to know how he died. We can keep playing these games over and over again. I'm not going to believe you. When right. you start telling me the Listen. truth, then I can believe you. But I can't deny this evidence. I can't. The trip you took doesn't make sense. The opportunity was there. Your pictures on that date with him. Your blood is in the house. Mixed with his. Mixed. Not alongside, but mixed. Your hair is there with blood. And your palm print is there in blood. Was it? I, it's over. Could it have been my blood from before? Your image is not important right now. Saving the rest of your life is... Listen, if I'm found guilty, I don't have a life. I'm not guilty. I didn't hurt Travis. If I hurt Travis, if I killed Travis, I would beg for the death penalty. Was there anybody else with you? I was traveling alone the whole time. Was there anybody else with you at Travis's house on Wednesday the 4th? I was not at Travis's house on Wednesday the 4th. You were? Because that's when the blood was left on, uh, the bloody palm print was left on his wall. I don't know what to tell you. If you were in my shoes and I had this evidence against against you, what would you say? No. I just that's. Do you have a pair of sweatpants that's got stripes around the backside? Was it first? Um. Somebody's seen you wearing those before. I've got so many clothes. Yeah, I think I do. Wait. I have a well. I have zippered one that zips in the back. It's got like stripes, uh, like big stripe on it on the side the wall. It's got a black the stripe all the way down and they're white. It's yeah. got the black. I have those right at the house. Okay. It's got, um, I have two pairs actually. One is too small and one is just about right. Um, the other one I bought anyway, that was too small because it was on sale and it's a good deal. Um, but yeah, they have stripes. And they have zipper. Well, what does that mean? What is that? Because I believe you were wearing a pair like that when this, when this happened. Remember I told you about the camera? It was taking pictures by mm -hmm. accident. Mm -hmm. the camera was upside down. It flashed. Another time, camera flashed. It looked like it was on the ground. Maybe it was kicked. But it took pictures. And it's obviously a female. Mm -hmm. And one of them was wearing those pants. Oh, I didn't even bring those pants on that trip. So. And if we find those pants, is that going to make my case a little bit better? Yeah. But it's just one of the photos that was taken by accident. And this is just a small portion of it. It's your foot, Joey. Those are your pants. Now, it's off color because we had to enhance it and the color kind of changes a little bit. Let's try this. 
This is his bathroom. That is not my foot. These are your pants. It's a different color, like I said, because we had to enhance it and the color changes. The zipper back. I have both of those pants at home. If these are the same one, though. I don't have a zipper there, though. Not on mine. And this is a black stripe, and this is white, and the black goes around the bottom, too. So. It looks like you don't really uh, need anything. It just looks like, I mean, it looks like you don't even need a good prosecutor anyway. So, I mean, You're right. I, I have to maintain my innocence. I can't admit to doing something that I haven't done. I, there's, and the, uh, part of me wants to cop out and say it. No. Well. If you're gonna cop out, it's because you're telling the truth. Well, that's not really cocking okay. out. Yeah, I don't want you to sit here and tell me a lie to appease me. That is the worst thing you can do for me. You should have at least done your makeup, Jody. Gosh. I didn't hear you breathe. I wonder how still here and I don't want to move lose a thing it might change my memory and I won't go and I can't breathe until you're resting here with me and I won't go I can't hide I won't leave Me until you're resting here with me Oh, no. 